I'm going to be reading Chapter 13 of Gangster Granny. Chapter 13, A Life of Crime. Hours passed on what seemed like minutes as Granny told her grandson about how she'd stolen every one of the dazzling items spread out on the living room floor. A huge tiara that belonged to the wife of the President of the United States of America, the First Lady. Ben, Granny told Ben how over 50 years earlier she'd sailed away to America on a cruise liner to steal it from the White House in Washington. And while sailing back home, she'd robbed every rich lady on the ship of her jewels. How she was caught red-handed by the captain of the ship and escaped by diving overboard and swimming the last few miles of the Atlantic Ocean back to England with all the jewellery hidden in her knickers. Granny told Ben about the sparkling emerald earrings that had been in her bungalow for decades worth over millions of pounds each. They had once belonged to the wife of an enormously wealthy Indian Maraha. There's a picture of Ben and his granny and all the jewels. <coughs> the old lady recounted how she enlisted the help of herds of elephants to steal them. She'd got the elephants to stand on top of each other in the form of a giant ladder so she could scale the wall of the fort in India where the earrings were to be kept and the royal bedchamber. The most exciting tale of all was how she stole the enormous deep blue diamond and sapphire brooch that sat sparkling on her worn living room carpet. She told Ben that it had once belonged to the last Empress of Russia, who ruled with her husband, the Tsar, before the Communist Revolution in 1917. It had for many years been under bulletproof graph at the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, guarded 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, by a platoon of fearsome Russian shoulders. This theft had required the most elaborate plan of all. Granny had hidden an ancient suit of armour in the museum, which dated back hundreds of years to the time of Catherine the Great. Each time the soldiers looked in another way, she would edge forward in the metal suit a few millimetres until she got close enough to the brooch and it took her a week. What? Like granny footsteps, asked Ben. Exactly, young man, she replied. Then I smashed the glass with a silver axe I was holding and grabbed the brooch. How did you escape, granny? That's a good question now. How did I escape? Granny looked flummoxed. Sorry, it's my age, boy. I forget things. Ben smiled supportively. That's okay, granny. Soon the old lady's memory seemed to come back into focus. Oh, yes, I remember, she continued. I ran outside into the courtyard of the museum, leapt into a barrel of a huge cannon and then fired myself to safety. Ben pictured this for a moment. His granny and the deepest, darkest Russia flying through the air in an ancient suit of armour. This was hard to believe. But how else could this old little old lady come to have such an astonishing collection of priceless gems? Ben loved granny's daring tales. At home, Ben had never had stories read or told to him. His, Ben's always, his parents just always switched on the television, slumped down on the sofa when they got home from work. Hearing the old lady talk was so exciting. Ben wished he could move in with her. He could listen to Granny all day. There can't have been a jewel in the world that you haven't stolen, said Ben. Oh, yes, there is, young man. Hang on. What's that? What's what? said Ben. Granny was pointing behind Ben's head, an expression of horror on her face. It's, it's, what, said Ben, daring not to turn around and see what she was pointing at. A shiver ran down his spine. Whatever you do, said Granny, don't turn round. That's the end of that chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Bye.